All right, welcome into Study Ball. Hope everybody had an awesome Thanksgiving. A lot of great games this past weekend in the NFL. I'm going to go back to uh, one of the Thanksgiving games, and there were some good performances, and I struggled with who I wanted to, to pull out of this. But I'm actually going to look at the New England Patriots' Mac Jones tape. Uh, there's been a lot of questions throughout the year. Where's their offense? What does it look like? Is it setting Mac Jones back? Uh, he's had a couple pretty good weeks the last couple weeks in terms of stats. Uh, but I still think um, there's a lot of room to grow in this offense. This offense is based on simplistic concepts, which doesn't always mean a bad thing. Uh, it's just, I wish they would push the envelope a little, get, get a little bit more creative with what they do because you see the same concepts over and over and over again in the offense. But again, that can be a good thing if you run it really well and you're having success with it and they've gotten better as the year's gone along. So let's take a look, because I thought it was the best tape uh, to be able to teach some different things uh, through the course of, uh, of that game. Um, so let's, let's jump into the tape and let's, uh, let's see what we find. All right, this is one of the concepts that I'm talking about that they love to run deep post here. It's a play that I call shove because it's a shallow and an over, okay? And you're gonna have shallow coming across here. So you're peeking, depending on what these safeties do, if they come jumping down, you got a chance at the post over the top. Otherwise, you're gonna read the flat defender on this high low over to this side. Mac Jones fumbles the ball, okay? And you see rotation over, so the middle safety goes over there. So we're Xing that out. Got a safety dropping down here, and really your high low is gonna come off of that guy. Okay, so play action fake. Now, eyes right here. Eyes right here on the safety. Here to the shallow. But eyes are on that safety because he's the flat defender, and we're attacking high low on the flat. So you'll see Mac Jones's eyes are over here for some reason. No idea why. Quarterbacks, get your eyes out in front of the routes. Both routes coming this direction, both routes going to the same spot on the field, read the one defender that has to cover both of those guys, and he'll tell you where to go with the football. So you'll see safety turns and runs. Now steps up a little bit here. This guy, I believe, is going to run past this next defender who's matching to this back. But this guy's turning and running. He's got his back turned to Mac Jones, and Mac Jones throws this ball up anyways. Now the prayer is answered. We complete it. It's a great throw, but he really needs to be getting down here to his underneath guy. And again, this guy kind of falls in the way, but I think if he steps up, he's got a chance to negotiate that guy. If that guy gets wide, just dump it to your back underneath. But got lucky here because his eyes were back to the inside instead of out in front of it. Didn't really see what was going on. Let me show you from the end zone copy. You'll see, granted, he drops the ball. That makes everything harder, okay? So he peeked over there first, but now eyes are back here. Eyes need to still be here, right? There's no reason to get your eyes back there because these routes aren't being thrown until they get over to this side anyway. So keep your eyes out in front of it until you decide you want to throw it. Then you'll know where to throw the football and you won't have this problem where you're just looking at a guy and that could have easily been intercepted if Harrison Smith turns his head and now the prayer gets answered right there, okay? So we're gonna come back here and we're gonna run, okay? In some offenses, what you say, 989. So nines are goes on the outside. Again, very simple concept. Basically an all-go concept with three wide receivers and it's just something that, you know, you're gonna see every team run basic uh, play. So they run a lot of these basic plays. And again, not that this is a bad play. It's going to work out really well here, but very simplistic mirrored up routes on both sides. A lot of those things within this offense, but this particular case, you're going to get cover two. Okay. We get cover two right here. Uh, you know, a lot of teams will run the Mike backer down here in Tampa too, but if they don't, it's a two on one read off of this guy. Okay. We're going to run the go on the outside. Does he widen? I throw it inside. Does he squeeze? I throw it outside. So here we go on the snap. I'm gonna bring these guys up here and they're gonna chip a little bit to help in that situation. But you'll notice Mike Backer does not run down the middle of the field. Nice release. 
Nice inside release there, okay? What does that inside release do, okay? We're trying to stretch this guy. We talked about the stretch inside out here. If this guy gets pushed outside and runs his seam outside and this guy goes out there, you see it cuts down the space that this safety has to cover, makes it easier for him to cover both of those guys. The inside guy, if he releases inside, which he does here, he releases inside and you see the stretch, the, the distance that that safety has to cover now by getting inside, plus I get inside leverage on the safety right now. I get leverage on the safety right now. So once I get leverage, that safety has to drive on me if he's gonna cover me. If he stays high over the top and I'm inside of him, quarterback gets a throw right there. So we're putting all the pressure on the safety with that inside release. I love it right there. Okay, and you see it. This guy gets depth right off the bat. He's got no chance. I've got leverage inside of him. Mac Jones, great job reading this out. Boom, ball down the middle. We get ourselves a touchdown here, two on one. Love the release. The release was the key right there to stretch that safety, open it up, give Mac Jones a throw. Nice throw and catch right there. All right, so this play, I'll let it run. A lot of people asking me to let it run. Okay, so you see it play out. All right, this is what I call a pure progression play. So pure progression, we're going to have this. We're going to have this. We're going to have one person run over, one person run under, and then this guy's going to check out the front side. So it's basically a one, two, three, four, five read. So pure progression. doesn't matter what the coverage is. We're going to pure progress this across the field. All right. So again, I'm all about details. So the way that we're running this corner route right here, and then this guy's running it out. Okay. What I don't understand with this is I want you to watch the out route here. Okay. So I never understand why we push inside to go outside. Okay. So we push inside. All it does is bring us closer to that defender. So I see this as a quarterback. Once this guy's back here, I'm not even really thinking this, although a lot of quarter or coaches will tell you, go do your progression anyways. I, that to me is dead in the water because I've got a guy outside. So I'm really reading this defender or seeing this, but you're going to watch how we just go in here and we allow him to cover us. Now to me, okay, so again, I don't ever like to say what to do unless I tell you why. To me, I'm going to run the corner route right here. I'm going to leave this outside receiver a little bit wider here, or even if he gets inside, I'm going to push wide and gain the leverage and try to win to the outside. By pushing wide, the first thing that it does for my quarterback is it makes this guy move. So if I push wide and I've got leverage on that guy, he's got to run right now. If he doesn't run, we win to the outside. And I know that as a quarterback. I push to the outside and that guy runs. I see that. I get a quick read. And I know that I'm coming back to this shallow right now. We push into him. We allow him. I mean, he just waits for us and then covers us. Okay, same thing happens. And now, nice job by Mac Jones. Getting down to his shallow. Okay, next part of the progression. Don't like his feet. Okay. Feet are going this way, and again, short throw, I can make this throw, but feet are away from his body, where's the throw go? Throw goes back behind him, nice throw and catch. Okay, so here's the great thing, his feet should be set over this way to throw the out, okay, which they are. Now, all you gotta do because your feet are there, bring your feet and eyes together, reset back to this side in front of this shallow, get the ball in front of him, and we got a chance for a better play, even though it's a nice snag right there and he keeps going get it out in front of him, but nice read there. Just wish the details were cleaned up a little bit. Nice job working through it and getting a completion. Okay, again, we'll run through this one time. All right, so you guys see it. So this over here is a play that I call plant. Okay, so it's double slants with a flat. This is a play that I call bullets or fish. Okay, so depending on what he's doing, he's going in here and he's gonna hook, possibly bounce outside. This guy's running the bullets route, which is kind of a swing, and it'll turn into a wheel down here um, against particular coverages. If this guy matches to him quick, we'll throw it over the top on the wheel, okay? But here's, what we're looking at right here, okay? So what I'm looking at down here 
uh, on the bottom is I'm really looking at this guy right here. So Minnesota is in a great position for this guy to cover that. And then Harrison Smith to jump out on this and not really give me a throw over there. Now, if I peek over there and they bring pressure, so I peek over here and he comes, you're exactly right. We got a chance to beat this because somebody's going to have to be popping out to cover this and I lock it. But if Harrison Smith drops, I want to work back to the other side. So you see it, right? He drops. He's in a great position to come up and play this. We got another body right here. Once I see Harrison Smith drop, I'm off of that. And for me, I'm going the other side because you notice on the other side, right? Look at this. We got great leverage off of this guy. We got our double slants and our flat. And I looked at myself and say, who's covering the flat out there? It's this guy right here. So he's got to chase and run to it. I've got leverage to the inside. I got a lot of good stuff going to the front side. Now, a big part of this is I wish the protection went the other way. If this was me, I'm pushing my tackle out here, 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 and I'm squeezing this right here. And I'm gonna be hot off of this guy. Okay, why am I gonna be hot off of this guy? Because I like to be hot into three receivers. It gives me more option as a quarterback to throw it into three receivers than to throw it to two receivers. Because instead, what the Patriots do is they slide the other direction. So this defensive end or Harrison Smith, either one of these guys comes, they make me hot. But because we do that, it only takes one of them. So this guy's gonna make me hot and I still have two guys over here to cover two. Never wanna throw a hot into that situation. Much easier to cover a hot into a two receiver side. See, so many NFL teams do this. I don't understand it. You can still run the same concept out the backside while sliding the offensive line this way and give your quarterback better options to throw it quick because now I've got, even if I've only got two guys running short, I've got two options to throw it hot instead of the one option over here that's easy to take away, and that's what happens. He's hot right here. He's got to throw it to his back, and the Vikings are right there to come up and make the tackle. Now, not a great tackle, and they spin by it and get the first down or close to it here, but Vikings had that wired because of the protection, because of the side that Mac Jones went to. Much easier ways of doing that. I wish more teams would slide away from their three-receiver side and give their quarterback more options to throw it hot. Okay, uh, I don't like details here. You guys know I'm all about details. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna run basically a double in here, which I call dig. Okay, they're gonna run post over to this side, check through and have something come into this area and then check back to this area, okay? So how we normally, how I used to read this is, okay, this inside in was really a dead uh, play. It was really there to kind of clear out the middle. Now, if they brought interior pressure, then I would attack the pressure and attack inside out. If they play man to man, so these guys aren't in here and I've got man to man on this guy, then I would read inside out. Anytime I got zone, I didn't worry about the inside guy and I would simply read outside in to the hook or the outer, whatever you had underneath it. I would read the high low right there against any kind of a zone. But the key on this play, okay, first of all, I don't like the details here. I don't like how he goes straight vertical here. Because the biggest thing about this play is I need distance between these two receivers. I need to stretch that area between those two receivers so I have windows to throw, okay? Two things here. This guy doesn't widen very much, and this guy doesn't seem very much. So you're gonna see how tight these guys are. Look at how tight they are to each other very tight to each other and you see guys are falling into those windows and able to pick everything up very quickly. I would like to see a seam here, okay? So what does that seam do here? It creates space between my, two, between my two receivers but it also holds this guy off. I don't want that guy to get with. If I attack him, it holds him off to the inside so I can open up a better window to the outside. Details, little details are key, okay? Don't run the details, we're really tight to each other. Here, okay, Mac Jones gets away from that side and he's gonna come back to his check down right there, okay? 
and nice job working through it. Could have gone over here too because you see everybody getting depth back to this side. Okay, another part of this, okay, and again, to me it looks like a dig. It, if this guy seemed harder inside and then went over here, I could see this as that same concept we talked about before, which was the post over and then the flat here, okay? So I don't think that's this concept just because of how they run it, but let's say it is that concept. So if it's that concept, what are we doing again? Read the flat defender, okay? And again, this guy doesn't get over there fast enough, so I think this is a double dig type combination, but Mac Jones is looking over here to the left, so let's play this the other way. So if I'm reading this the other way, reading the flat defender, just like on the first one when that safety turned and ran, read the flat defender. The flat defender is 12, 15 yards deep. Mac should just be turning right now and hitting this. Now he gets there, but again, he starts to take off. It shouldn't be that hard. Come back, read the defender, he's 15 yards deep, dump it. Get it to him as fast as you possibly can to allow him to make a move. By the time Mac starts to run and then get it out there, you see the safeties coming up and is able to make the tackle. Read through it, quarterback, see it. Know where your eyes need to be, get the ball out quick. Okay, again, don't like the details but this looks to be a very similar play. Now we widened this receiver here so we've got better width on this. Push up, he's gonna run the in. Push up, he's gonna run the in. Chip, run the out. And then we've got our backside combination over there. Okay, so again, details. Seam, attack, okay? Hold this guy off. Get this guy to squeeze, create more distance here so the quarterback can get a quicker read and have more space out here and ultimately it's going to become a high low off of this defender right there and again you see it look at how tight these guys are to each other there is no spacing there if the inside guys pulling his guy out of there I have no spacing to be able to throw the outside one they're too close together don't like the details right there but nonetheless the read still comes off of this defender that's in that window. Nice job here, dumping it off underneath. I like it, right? Again, not on time. Again, I don't know why he's looking to the left, okay? But you can look here, verify it's cover two so he doesn't have the one-on-one -on -one here. Now come back to your front side. So there, now just get it out, okay? Now just know your read, okay? Know your read. Hook defender. Okay, this guy was kind of in that window and he chased. So now go to your next guy that's in that window. Drop it now. Drop it now. Put it on him. But we get there eventually and it becomes a big play for us. Again, you see it. Simple, basic concepts that they run over and over again. I just want to see him clean up the details. You're going to run these concepts over and over again. You got to get the details down. And those to me are key details. It's about spacing. It's about timing. Quarterback, it's about getting your eyes in the right spot, making quick decisions on these concepts that you're gonna run over and over again. Okay. Similar type concept right here. We're gonna run what I call pinch. So it's an influence post right here. It's a big in over here. We're gonna run a deep stop or come back, back to this side. I'm gonna chip a little bit and we're gonna to try to get underneath so we get that high low. Once again, right here, so a good concept. Love this concept, one of my favorite concepts. Okay, we've got this influence here to run through any. So it's influence, we wanna influence the nearest safety, run through his inside shoulder and get him turned. Then from there, we're gonna high low this defender with the shallow and with the in, okay, anytime. I get a one-on-one -on -one over here where nobody's in that alley. As you can see here, let's run this. Okay, so you see Mac Jones could have easily gone right over here one-on-one, -on -one, nobody in the alley, make the game simple, go one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, he decided to go the other direction. And again, I would like to see this. Make it look just like the other one. So we'd see him inside, we push up. On the other one, we ran the in. On this one, get leverage on the safety attack the inside number of the safety. So now I've gained leverage. Now I've put the pressure on the safety. I get him to turn his hips inside or I win and have a shot down the field. And then 
we helped to open up that spacing for the big in over here. Now in this particular play, this guy chases that and it, I mean, there's nobody in this window right here. Nice job by Mac Jones to come back and stick the big in on them right here. And again, if I'm this guy right here, influence the safety. I don't like just running straight here because he's a dead receiver right now. If he's just gonna run straight, if I see him inside, so go back to the beginning, if I see him inside and then attack the inside number of this safety, okay? So it, it either clears it out or if I attack that inside number and I'm going here, it makes me a viable option against middle close if this guy wants to get a lot of depth and this guy wants to attach backside, it gives me a throw there. So I want to make sure that guy's an option on every play, but he's also doing and taking care of his responsibility to open up this guy. To me, an influence post does that. You don't have to just run him straight here because he is a dead receiver right there because he's given up all his leverage as he's just trying to clear out an area. Nice step up, nice timing on a quick hitch and a great throw right on the number. Okay, not a huge fan of this play. So I know that Minnesota loves to run quarters. Okay, so quarters coverage, uh, one, two, three, four. These all got the quarter of the field. Okay, and we're gonna run uh, double post combination, and then we're gonna run an out right here. So in quarters, Okay, I love the double post combination, so that can be good against quarters, but I'm not really sure what this adds to the mix because I expect a defender to be out there in quarters anyways. Okay, so again, I want you to, to see this and details, make them all look the same. Seam inside, hold off this defender, gain leverage on this defender, get inside of him and then influence and run through his inside number because we want to get this guy squeezed. I got to get that guy to move off his spot if I want to try to throw this other post out here. The best way to get him to move is to gain leverage on him, is to move as a receiver. If I just run straight at a guy, okay, it doesn't matter who he is. If I run straight at him, I don't force him to move. He doesn't have to move until I get inside or outside of him. So we want to try to get inside or outside right now. It looks just like everything else we've done. We could go in, up, and run the over. We could go in, up, and run the dig. We can go in, up, and run the influence. All looks exactly the same, and we could even go in, up, and run the corner on a concept that we want. So everything looks the same, so we give the same presentation and do something different. So I'd like to see him get in here. Get in here where you already beat this safety down the middle of the field for a touchdown. Get in here and make him conscious of you and attack down the middle just like you did on that 989 play. Get him to squeeze you and now maybe I get my one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Now, these guys play it really well because we have no spacing again and you see it. He covers that because I never get inside of him. This guy stays back. Okay, as he does in, in quarters, and I've seen him do that a number of times this year. And then we should really have two guys out here to take this out on this particular play. So I don't know what we're trying to gain necessarily with that out route right there against the quarters coverage, which I expect them to play down here. So Mac is in a bit of a bind here. He doesn't really have anything and got to take a sack here on this particular play. Actually, let me go back to this one. So if I'm going to do this, okay, uh, this particular play, I want to run this guy to the flat right now instead of pushing him up and then running him out here. Okay, Kurt, why would you want to do that? Okay, why I want to do that is again, I want to clear things out and make it easier on my quarterback. I expect in quarters that this guy is the guy that's supposed to cover the flat area. Okay, some teams will carry with this guy, but in true quarters, we've got that guy that's circled is supposed to be covering the flat area of the field. So if I go right now to the flat, one of two things happen. Either this guy that's circled 
has to come up right now because he's threatened to that area because this guy isn't taught to chase this guy out to the flat, not his responsibility. So I force that guy to move. And by forcing that guy to move, it helps me to open up this post row back behind him. So I want to get that underneath coverage out of there to clear it up for him. If he wants to drop back there, now I've already got leverage on this guy. I'm running away from him. That guy wants to get depth. Boom. I can put the ball on him right here. By pushing him up vertical, I allow the Mike linebacker to cover him. I allow this guy to drop back and take the window. And I give my quarterback no options in this particular case. Okay. So here we are in a third and one situation. And this is what we call fire pass, okay? So a fire pass protection, a hard play fake on third and one, make it look like we're gonna run. And this guy is going to block the end man on the line of scrimmage. We're gonna turn the offensive line back. So it's a hard play action covering all the gaps right here. And then usually what you do is you release a guy off of that end man on the line of scrimmage and take him to the flat, okay? And off of that part of it, you're gonna have the Patriots run flat and then they're going to run what we call a mesh concept. Here, everybody talk about it, mesh. These two guys are meshing to each other. We're trying to create a rub with this guy for the other shallow and pop him open. But as a quarterback, this is a quick five steps. One, two, three, four, five. Get set, get set, Matt, get set. We're third and one. We are looking to take this right now. If I've got any space in between these two guys, I need to have my foot in the ground Planted, get it out right now, get it out. Okay, that is space right there. We won't, don't want to pass that up on third and one in hopes something else gets open. We got to have that ball out there. That's a good look. It's exactly what we want. Put it on him. He falls for the first down. We got it, okay? So he misses that because to me, he's slow. He's taking too big of a drop here to get there. So by the time he's open, right, Max already looking backside because he wasn't fast enough to this flat, even though you see the separation there. But even though through that, they get the rub. This guy goes up over the top, creates the rub right there. Nice job with this progression to get to the next guy quick, get the ball out quick, and we're getting the first down. And so I like the play design there on third and one. I just want to see Mac be a little bit quicker and hit that flat right now and get us that first down. Okay, love this play call here. Okay, so this is a play that we call, they're gonna put a corner out right here, but we used to call this F post. And so we would run what we call an influence shallow right here. And then this guy comes back behind it and he runs the F post from that side. Okay, so you're gonna see it, right? We're gonna run the influence shallow here, then the F post comes behind it, okay? couple things I would do differently. And again, based on what I see as their read. So I see Mac and Mac is looking right here for Jacoby Myers um, on this post. Okay. So if that's the case, if we're trying to hit that quick post, okay, the first thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to put a fourth receiver to that side. So you put your back to that side. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five. Look at all the defenders we have over there because we've gone four strong, right? One, two, three, four strong. We're going to bring guys to the party. So I can understand it if your first read is this shallow and you're trying to get everybody strong and throw the shallow backside, or you've got something you're trying to do back here. Okay, put the back strong and then throw it to the weak side. But if your first read is right here, why would you bring all these guys to the party on this particular play? It makes no sense to me. So I would put the back over here and have him doing something weak and bring more of these guys over weak so I don't have to deal with all these bodies. That's the first thing. Second thing is I want you to watch the tight end here. The tight end here chips this defensive end. Another thing I would never do. Why? Because again, I'm trying to get this guy open right now. That's who Mac Jones is looking at. So all I do by chipping this guy is I slow the read. I bring more guys to the party and I don't clear this out for that quick post. So I would never chip 
that guy right there, okay, on this particular play. My goal is get across here and try to influence anybody in this area because that's where I'm trying to throw the football. So we're slow there, we chip, everything's slow, okay? We, we don't get through there. Now this guy starts to take a step there and Mac wants to throw this and then he does a nice job of coming back. So Mac does a nice job of hitting what we call the second window. First window would be in front of this guy. Second window is he goes behind this guy. So nice job by Mac, he wants to throw it there. He pumps it and goes that second window and hits Jacoby up over the top, okay? So that's the first part, okay? First part is I like the concept. I don't like the details of it. Get across there. But then the second thing is I want to have some sort of concept that Matt can work to. So let's say this guy right here does a nice job and covers this post, okay? We're not going to go back out here to the corner. That's really a dead play unless it's man-to-man -man because we've got a guy sitting out here. So now what's my combination backside, okay? I already told you I would put the back back there. So oftentimes we would check the back and then we'd have him swing. We would have this backside guy run a deep comeback. It could convert to a deep corner against cover two, but that's what we would have backside. So if I didn't like the read front side, I got my eyes backside. And then my, backside, my eyes on the backside would start here. If this guy got depth, I'm going to hit that guy right there. If that guy comes down and goes to cover the swing, I'm going to take this comeback back here. And then if it gets muddled there, I've got this guy in the shallow to recover to on the backside. So I'm giving myself kind of a triangle on the backside. Now I don't really know here. I don't really know what he's doing, if that's supposed to be a post or, or if that's supposed to be an in. Like an in could work. Also, we could put this guy up on an in so we could come back to the backside and we could read that high low off of that defender if I didn't have it front side. But you, again, you see, I, I don't really know. This guy's coming in here too quick and this guy's not anywhere close to giving us a high low and they're too close together and so again I don't like the details it's one of the things you're going to run a few basic concepts be good at the details okay understand the details understand what this does for a quarterback putting the back over here brings a whole bunch of guys to the party that I got to see chipping this guy it doesn't clear it out for my post runner fast enough that it makes it all hard to decipher with all this mess here Although it's a nice job there by Mac Jones and Jacoby Myers continuing through that hole and making a play. Okay, so play we call popcorn. Okay, so it's a pop right there. It's a corner over the top and then a flat. Again, everybody runs it back here. They're going to run some sort of a choice and I think a comeback back over here so we usually really like this popcorn play when i get the corner off here and i try to isolate this guy flat to pop okay he runs the flat quick i hit the pop he stays inside i hit the flap flap i hit the flat right there okay biggest problem on this play is this guy okay so i know that we can put this guy in a bind that he's got to go wide or sit on the pop. Problem is, is if this guy pushes hard right now, then I've got the outside backer to cover the flat, I've got the inside backer to cover the pop, and I've got the corner falling off to cover the corner. So I really want to see that guy right there. So you see Mac does a great job eyeing this guy right now. When he looks at him and this guy goes flying over here, he does a great job of saying, forget it. I'm not going there anymore. I'm gonna work backside to my choice and comeback combination, nice job getting back there quick. Got the isolation. He could have gone right now and taken his one-on-one -on, -one on the stop if he wanted it, but I like this option underneath with leverage. Boom, back there, okay? All about knowing, okay? I always say this in the playbook. Always know who your biggest problem is, okay? This guy is not my problem because this guy can only cover the flat or the pop, one or the other. My problem is if that Mike linebacker pushes out hard to the pop and I allow this guy to cover the flat. I've got nothing else. Peek him first. He tells us everything. He sees him run. Boom. Get backside. Get yourself a completion. Nice job there by Mac Jones. Great timing on it as well.
I love this play. Okay, so again, you're going to see. Quarters coverage. This is Minnesota's favorite cover coverage. But what they also like to do is they like to run what we call push cover four. So this defender right here, when you've got your three receiver side away from him, will oftentimes push to the front side, meaning he understands the biggest concept, biggest threat is this three by one side or this three receiver side, that direction. So he's going to turn and push in this direction. Okay, he's still supposed to be playing quarters. So this guy still sits outside and plays his quarters, but he doesn't have the help he, he normally has inside because that guy pushes to the front side. Okay, so I just want you to watch that safety here. Okay, Harrison Smith is one of those guys. It does right there. See it? Okay, so it's right there. He's turning, he's eyeing, he's ready to push over to this side. Now, he, he took a little bit longer than normal, and Mac was looking at him from the get-go. He looks right, then he's trying to find the safety, okay? He gets the safety to push. Now, he's got the post route over the top, which normally you would never throw because this safety is supposed to be back there taking it away, but he pushes to the front side, and boom. Now, I've got my shot over the top of him. Great throw and catch to the big post, and we replace him. Really, really well done by Mac Jones. Again, I want you to look at the details, okay? We try to do the right thing seeming right here and then running the in, okay? And now, problem is we don't get enough width here. So I talked about the spacing. Look at the spacing between these two ends once again. Look at it, they're breaking. Like, wh what are we doing here? Like, what chance does my quarterback have to throw anything right here because they're on top of each other. One guy can cover two, it's clouded all over the place. Now this guy does get depth, so we could drop it off underneath again, but there is no spacing and no opportunity for my quarterback to throw one of those digs on time because there's terrible spacing between the two. Okay, Kurt, what would you do? I would burst outside. Burst outside, get my width. That burst allows this guy more time to get clearance. It creates more width between these two and it creates better timing for my quarterback because we want to throw this thing wide and we want to be able to isolate the high low here so it, it creates all kinds of advantages for me if I burst outside and he tries to burst but then he gets pushed inside and he gets impatient and it messes up the whole concept great job by Mac Jones seeing that push of the safety and making a great throw up over the top Okay, so here's a play we call spout. Okay, so we're gonna go here, call it spout because it, it's, it's an out to the top, okay, and then it's, it's all hooked. So there's a lot of different variations of getting to these same areas, but uh, we've got an out, a hook, and a hook, and then backside we have combo, okay? So it's some sort of a flat uh, slant combination to the backside. So, both of, these, um, both of these plays we like against corner off. We don't like them against cover two because cover two, this guy rolls up and takes the flat. There's a guy sitting here to take the slant and we don't really like it. On the other side, this guy rolls up. He's there to take the out. There should be another guy there to take uh, the hook and then there should be a backer inside to take the pop. So we don't really like either one of them against cover two. We get cover two. We like to try to beat that Mike linebacker with the pop inside and get our eyes there right now, okay? So you're gonna see they roll to cover two here, okay? So if I was reading that side, that's dead, that's dead. I'm gonna try to beat that Mike linebacker with the pop, okay? But this other side, notice, corner off. We like this against corner off. Slant, flat, okay? All I'm worried about if I get corner off on this slant flat play, is this guy right here. If this guy's down tight is in, and in a position to take away the slant, then I'm gonna to go to the other side or I'm gonna go inside to the pop every single time because he can X that out. This guy's there to take the flat and he X's that out because normally this read is off of one defender. Okay, so normally the read's off of one defender. He covers the flat, I throw the slant. He covers the slant, I throw the flat. That's how we run and read that play, but it's all about this safety. So 
on this particular play, okay, you see Mac look left. Mac looks left. When he looks left, he should be seeing this safety. When that safety gets depth, it's game over right here. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You stay inside, boom, I'm taking the flat right now. Okay, you go flying outside like he does here. Look at how open this window is right here. So he looks left first. Boom, there it is. There's the throw right here. Bang. We've got our big play right there, all because this safety dropped with depth. Okay, so I'm just showing you that because it happens a few times in the game. Okay, he doesn't like it there. Good job knowing that they rolled down to this side. Get inside right away and try to stick that pop on there. But again, because you read backside first, okay, and you don't take it, gives this guy a chance to react. If you're front side right now, because if I had covered two front side and I read front side, I'm Xing that off, I'm Xing that off, and I'm getting right in here right now. So if I was there right now with my eyes, throw it. I got a chance, I got a chance. But he goes backside first a little bit late, and he allows the Mike linebacker to cover it. So. It's all the understanding of you're looking left, read the right thing, you've got your two-on-one off of this guy, make your throw to the backside. Okay, all right, this is something that Minnesota loves to do, okay? So they love to come up and walk everybody up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They've got seven guys up. Okay, they got seven guys up. You could count this guy up if you wanted to, if you count the tight end in the mix, because you notice the Patriots have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blockers then. So it's either six blockers against seven or seven blockers against eight. They've got everybody walked up there. Okay, so we got to figure out who we're going to block here. So offensive line, back stepped up. We're going to go here, here, here. Back's going to go here. Offensive line is going to go to these two, okay? So my issue is Harrison Smith right here, okay? I'm assuming because of the position that they're in, I'm assuming he's going to have to cover Jacoby, and we've got man here, and this guy's going to cover the tight end, and this guy's going to cover here, and this safety's free. So I'm assuming that's the case. So we should have it all picked up, assuming they don't bring an extra guy. But needless to say, I've got to look and see, because if this guy comes, it creates what we call a hot, and now we've got to get the ball out of our hands. So that's what happens here. Harrison Smith comes, okay? Harrison Smith comes. Now he's a free hitter. What are we going to do with the football now, okay? This to me, again, is details. You got to give your receiver or your, your quarterback a hot receiver. He's not looking. He's running down the field. He's not looking. He's running down the field. What's my quarterback supposed to do? This guy is free. This guy is free. So normally what we would do if we had a two receiver set here, this guy needs to peek. If the guy over his head comes and he's hot, this guy just needs to peek. While he's running his vertical stem on his route, just look at me. Look at me, and if you look at me and I see that guy come, I'm going to pop that football on you right away. So right here, slow down and look at me. If I'm Mac, I need to see that guy ready to get the ball out of my hands, pop it to my guy right here. I've got no hot, no situation, everybody going down the field. And what am I supposed to do? I've got no chance here on this play. There is nothing that I can do as a quarterback right now except run around and try to make a play. To me, again, bad design. Always have a quick option for your quarterback. Always have a hot for your quarterback some way, shape, or form, okay? Even if you wanted to say that, hey, our hot was to the other side with whatever we're doing, then this to me is what we call a sight adjust. It's a safety, a safety blitzes. Now a sight adjust means that somebody is changing their route. They're adjusting their route off of that play. So if it's the other side and this guy comes, we need a sight adjust. This guy's gonna turn this into a hitch right here. So when that guy comes, boom, run your hitch, ball's out, and I've got a chance to complete this ball. We got no chance right here. And now Max just got to turn and throw it away or throw it into to coverage here. And I'm putting myself in harm's way on a play that doesn't need to be in harm's way. And if you're saying that you're trying to get this back to check one inside and then get to the outside here, no chance. No chance it's going to happen. You're asking guys to do too much and you're not giving your quarterback an answer. 
and it leads to bad football. Okay, look at this again. All right, so here's what I believe they have on this particular play here. Okay, so we're going to run this guy on a corner route. This guy is going to run across, under, under. And what's this outside guy? Is he run a pivot? Yeah, so this outside guy is going to go in here, and then he's going to pivot back outside. Okay, so similar to what we've seen already. Okay, so just envision this. Okay, so on other plays, we had a post here, we had an over, and then we had something going to the flat. Okay, so this is very similar to that concept because we're having the same guys go to the same areas on the backside. But now again, it's about details right here. So instead of running a post, we're running a corner route right here. Okay, so you're gonna see Hunter Henry, He's going to go inside. Okay, why are you going inside? Okay, A, you're going to lose leverage to go inside. But B, and the most important thing, is the timing and spacing between these two guys is awful. So I'm just going to run this one time and I'm going to show you. He goes seaman inside. He gets jammed. Once again, where am I throwing this as a quarterback? What are my options here? These two guys are right on top of each other right now. And it's leading to a bad throw into coverage, into all kinds of garbage that's going on here. And really what I want is I want this guy to get wider. I want this guy to be pulled out and I want to try to hit this outside like we saw on the over and the flat. Okay. So I understand what they're trying to do here. How would I change it? What I would do is I, first of all, I'm changing it. I'm trying to burst release outside. Okay. I'm trying to get outside, then get up the field. Okay. So I can clear this out and create spacing for this guy. I'm trying to get everything wide here and attack the outside here and clear out the outside, just like I would if I was running a post. I wanna clear out that outside with this corner out, okay? So I'm gonna burst outside instead of seaming inside. And then once I get to this position, I'm not gonna run this flat, okay? Because this guy's already coming to that same area. So I'm not gonna run that flat. I'm going to take this high angle, okay? So even if Hunter Henry went inside here like he does, thing I want to tell him is take a high angle. Go clear out the deep area of that field. Get somebody to chase you deep so now I can get back to my high low on the outside. So let's just watch even if he goes right here. Okay, he goes right here. See how he's trying to come out flat here and he mucks this up? Okay, so fine, you go inside, no problem. Now go high, go high, don't get in this guy's way, don't run into him and make him chase you high. So once he chases you high, now you clear it out, we let this guy get over the top and we read our high low over to this side. But A, we're going in here to this spot, which I understand they're trying to go grab somebody and then move out. But because we have everybody going right here, all these guys are stacked on top of each other and the quarterback's trying to get some sort of read and everybody's like in the same area. We haven't cleared much out for the quarterback. Now the quarterback is holding the football and waiting for something to happen and I got a bunch of bodies in there. And again, leads to bad football because of bad details in my opinion. Okay, so here we go. See the same play again. Okay, we're gonna go here and to the flat. That combo play again, we got the corner off. So what am I looking at, quarterbacks? Looking at that safety. Okay, does that safety stay back? Does that safety give me a window to that side? Okay, on the other side, we're running a double slant. Okay, so I've got options here. If I feel like this guy's out of there and the corner's off, I can read this slant to flat, okay? If I don't like that or I feel that this guy's in the way over here, I can read my double slant off of this guy. He carries inside, I hit my outside one. So I've got options here depending on what that backside safety does. Okay, backside safety, I feel he's got enough depth, just like he did the last time, okay? I'd like to not see Mac 
hitch here. Watch what he does with his back foot. Okay, see his back foot? He picks it up. Get back there, set your back foot. Okay, so when you don't set your back foot, okay, when you can pick up your back foot and put it down, that means all of your weight is on the front of your body. Okay, we don't want our weight on the front of our body. We want to be loaded up on the back foot so I can create power and I can drive the ball from my back foot through my front hip and I create accuracy and I create power. So Mac has a tendency to get too fast and get his weight up front. I don't want the weight up front. And so now he's got to pick that foot up and put it down before he throws it when that ball should be out now, should be out right now. All about technique. He throws it late, still gets it, gets a nice play. Let's go to the end zone copy, and I just want you to watch the back foot, okay? Watch the back foot. Get back, get set, hold on the back foot. Nope, picks it up, puts it down. He's up front, picks it up, puts it down. If your weight is on the back, you can't pick up your back foot. You hold on it, and you get the ball out. Just a little thing, but it's about timing, and it's about details, and that to me is what this offense is lacking more than anything else. And it's on the outside, but it also adds in at the quarterback spot. Timing is everything. Okay, so here we go again. Okay, we got basically the same play. Again, now we're gonna run double outs to this side. Okay, again, don't like the double outs against cover two. That guy's gonna jump that. You're gonna have somebody right there. So. If I had cover two to both sides, yes, I would go to the double out and I'd probably try to hit this inside one. But again, let's look at the look up top, okay? First time, didn't throw it. Second time, did throw it. Third time, safety out of there. Why not throw it? Why not read that side again and read that defender again, okay? So about consistency, right here, this guy's getting depth. I'm probably hitting the flat right here instead of the slant, but why not go back to that side. It's the same look that we've seen three times. He's done three different things. Again, it's about consistency. It's about what you're seeing. It's about knowing where your eyes are and should be, and you see it, right? Dead, dead. Okay, got to get back to the back. But our best look side was this side as we saw on the last play. And for some reason, Mac doesn't go over to that side again. Nice job here trying to find a completion and getting it to his check down. But your opportunity was corner off, two on one back here, and we missed an opportunity. Okay, this is late in the game too, so these things are so important late in the game. Okay, and this is in essence the play that cost them the game. Okay, so here we go again. We'll see it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so they've got seven guys up. Okay, offensive line, we've got five, six, and seven guys here to block them. So we should have everything blocked. Should kick here, should kick here. Center should go this direction. Back standing up to take that. We're here, we're here. And then Hunter Henry should be taking that extra guy who's probably covering him man, but if he comes, we have enough to block all of their guys, okay? We drop back here, okay? What's the play, okay? So it looks to me like the play is very similar to what we've run a number of times. Instead of a post, this is a go. This guy's running across right here. Gonna run it in. We're gonna chip or check, and then we're gonna go to the flat, okay? So if that's the case, what are we looking at? We talked about it, very first play of the game. Got the go route. Probably not taking it because this corner's off. But I have this right here, okay? We have this right here. If I get zone coverage, read the flat defender. Again, it's two minutes to go in the game. We need a touchdown here. We gotta get the ball out of our hands. We can't take a sack in this particular situation. So here we go, okay? Coming across, read the flat defender. There's the flat defender, okay? Here's the first down marker. Okay, I think it's third down on this particular play. Just read it. This guy gets depth. He gets depth to take the cross. Hit your flat. Hit your flat. Know where your eyes need to be. Get your eyes there right now. You're looking that direction. Just see him. Just see him. If he comes screaming up, then get ready to come back here to your over. 
He stays back, play the play. He stays back, give it to your guy in a good position, get it to him quick, and take your chances. Say, dude, you've got to beat that guy and get the first down in this situation. You've got to set us up for fourth and short, so we've got an option. I can't take a sack, okay? It's right there in front of me. Read it, throw it. Read it, throw it. Mac, this, what he did so good last year was see things, get the ball out of his hands. Sometimes I thought he was too quick to his check downs. You know, too much just trying to get it out and get a completion. This year, I feel like he's holding it more and missing these opportunities to get the ball out of his hands. And again, I don't know what he's doing. He's got time. So where are his eyes right here? Okay. Again, if you're reading this guy and this guy jumped up, great. Your eyes should be right there. And then we'll work back to this in late. But I should be over here, should be trying to get something to this side because this route is set up to go to that side. Mac doesn't get the ball out, doesn't make the good decision there at the end, takes a sack, and that ultimately leads to a long fourth down and no chance to come back and win this football game. So there you go. That's what I'm seeing with the Patriots offense, okay? Not necessarily bad concepts across the board. Some good, solid concepts. Like to see more. Saw it in there. A lot of the same concepts, concept ideas over and over and over again, but they're good concept ideas, so I'm not going to argue as much with that. But it's about details, 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 details. You want to be simple with your offense, you better be really, really good at what you do and the details. Details as a quarterback, technique, throwing the football, getting the ball out on time, knowing where your eyes should be and what you're seeing, and then the details of creating the right kind of spacing, getting to positions quickly to allow your quarterback to make reads and get the ball out on time uh, and giving him opportunities to do that. You see right there, this is my problem with where the Patriots are overall. Yes, I'd like to see more concepts and more creativity overall, but if this is just what you're gonna do and you're gonna be a simplistic offense that runs the same concepts over and over again, get good at them. Get the details down. Again, I'm not the only one that teaches this. There may be different ways of teaching all this stuff, but this stuff is important to me when I played. I ran all of these concepts, and it was all really, really important to me because as a quarterback, I want to get my eyes on the right spot. I want you to create spacing. I want you to attack them a certain way so I can get my read and I can get the ball out of my hands and get it to my playmakers. And that to me is where Mac Jones has struggled this year. Things haven't happened quick enough for him. It's forced him to overthink things, to get through things through get through things too quickly and make a lot of bad decisions with the football that he didn't do nearly as much last year. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's coming together and it's leading to, and in that game, I mean, they completed a lot of passes. They had a lot of yards, but you see all the stuff that could have been, right? All the opportunities out there that were missed because the details weren't very good on those concepts. So that to me is what I've been seeing with the Patriots all year long. And, you know, two weeks ago, I think Mac went 23 for 27 and they scored three points, right? Why? Lack of efficiency. And efficiency, yes, we get completions and we do that, but we need to score points. We need these plays to turn into big plays. We need to, them to turn into first downs and critical opportunities. Details, reading it right as a quarterback, getting the ball to the right guy, making good decisions. That to me is where this team has been way up and down, and I would say more down than up this year, and why they've struggled to score points and to do it week in and week out.